Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to be talking about multiplying fractions using manipulatives. The two manipulatives that we're going to be using are fraction strips and paper folding. I made these fraction strips in Word, print them, and cut them out using a rotary cutter. Every one of these strips adds up to be one whole, so notice in this strip of one third, I have one third, another third, and a third third to make a total of three thirds or one whole. Let's see how we can model multiplying one fifth times one. Another way of saying one fifth times one is what is one fifth of one? So I'm going to get rid of all the strips except for one fifth and one. I want to find out what is one fifth of one. I want to see what's the value when I split one up into five equal parts basically. And that's exactly what this one-fifth strip does. As you can see, it's five equal parts, so one of those five equal parts is just one-fifth. So my solution is just this one-fifth. Let's look at one-third times one-fourth. Or another way of saying that is one-third of one-fourth. So if this one-fourth, I'm going to ignore these other fourths. I'm just looking at this section of one-fourth. So I have a third. What, what a third means is it's split up into three equal parts. So I need to look through my fraction strips and see which one of those fraction strips cuts this one-fourth into three equal parts. Let's try the one-sixth. That doesn't cut into three equal parts. The one-eighth. It cuts into two equal parts, but I'm needing a third of one-fourth, not a half. If it was half of a fourth, it would be one-eighth. Looking at my remaining three, I see one-tenth doesn't quite do it, one-twelfth does, and one-sixth is, is much too small. So I see that one-twelfth cuts one-fourth into three equal parts. So if I have one-third of one-fourth, that's just the one-twelfth. What if I switch this around? So what is one-fourth of one-third? So how can I split this one-third up into four equal parts? Well, let's see if the one-twelfth works, and it does. I can split that one-third up into four equal parts. That's one-fourth of one-third is one-twelfth. So now let's look at one-fourth of two-thirds. I need to split this two-thirds up into four equal parts. So if I just eyeball that, that's one, two, three, four. This one-twelfth looks like it works, but I might have another one that might work a little bit better. Let's take a look at this one-sixth. This one-sixth does split this one-third up into four equal parts. So one-fourth of two-thirds is one-sixth. Now does a one-twelfth work? Yeah, it does. It just as you have a little bit extra work at the end. It does split up into four equal, it does split this up into equal parts, and there are equal smaller parts Now let's see if this one twelfth would work. As you can see, I have eight equal parts going into two thirds, but I can group those into groups of two. So two twelfths is the same thing as one sixth, as you can see modeled here by fraction strips. So what is one half of three eighths? If I wanted to fold this strip, I could fold it right there. And so I'm looking for this line right here. So I'm going to play with my strips to see which would equal that. Looking at the fractions that are larger than 1 8, none of them line up exactly where I needed to at half of 3 8. So it's not going to be any of these. Looking at the fractions that are smaller than 1 8, 1 tenth is a little bit too big, 1 twelfth is a little bit too small, but 16 looks to be right on the money. Let's take a closer look. And indeed it is. You can see how every two sixteenths is an eighth. That's because two sixteenths reduces to one eighth. And so if I have three of these sixteenths, that is exactly at half of the three eighths. So my solution is three sixteenths. Again, is multiplication commutative? Yes, it is. So if I switch this around, three eighths of one half. So if I take the one half 
and imagine separating this into eight equal parts and counting three of them, that's going to be my solution. It should be the three sixteenths again. If you look, sixteen does line up and does cut into eight equal parts, and so I just need three of those, which is then three sixteenths. I want to make sure that it's clear what we saw with the fraction strips and what you've been taught for how to multiply fractions. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators together and put it on top, and then the denominators together and put it in the denominator. So for the one-fourth times two-thirds, it's going to be one times two over four times three. And one times two is two over four times three, which is twelve. And that two over twelve, as we saw with the fraction strip, reduces to one-sixth. These top three are pretty straightforward. I'll fill them in. Let's finish up these bottom ones. I'm going to show you how you can multiply one-half times three-eighths using paper folding. So here I have a piece of paper that I've folded into eight equal parts. So I folded it in half, then half again, and then half again. And then I folded it in half the other direction. Notice that this is eighths on one side and a half on the other. So if I was to find out what three-eighths would be, it would be one, two, three-eighths. Let me color that in. So we can see here I have three-eighths. Then I can color in the half. So as you can see here, this is three-eighths times one-half. So you can see we end up with these three rectangles that I've colored purple. And how many rectangles are there in total? Well, there are 16 rectangles, and three of them would be 3 sixteenths. There's an applet online that models this. Let me show you how to find it. To find the folding paper applet, go to the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives at nlvm.usu.edu. You could also just Google NLVM, and it should come up. Their website is broken down by topic and by grade level. You can pick number and operations on 3rd through 5th or 6th through 8th. Scroll down until you find fractions, rectangle multiplication. You have to make sure you have Java installed. If you don't have Java installed, there are directions on this website for you to follow to get it installed. Right now, at first, says it's set up to do 1 3rd times 1 3rd. We are wanting to see 1 half times 3 eighths, so I'm going to up this to eighths over here. I'm going to decrease this to halves, and this looks like our paper was a second ago. So I can adjust this slider. Right now it's on one eighth. I can up it to two eighths, and then finally up to three eighths. And here you can see we have three eighths, so three of our eighths are colored red, and one of our halves is colored blue, leaving three of the 16 possible squares colored purple. So this is 3 sixteenths. I'm going to show you one of the other ones we did. Let's look at 1 fourth times 2 thirds. I have 1 fourth here and 2 thirds here. And you see how we get 2 out of 12, which, reduces, which will reduce down to 1 sixth. You can also do improper fractions. Let's say I wanted to multiply 5 fourths by 9 fifths. Notice each rectangle here is like a piece of paper, and each piece of paper is made up of 20 rectangles. And so if I was to add up all the total purples, we have 45 rectangles out of the 20, giving us 45 over 20, which would reduce down to 9 fourths. I hope the two manipulatives of fraction strips and just folding paper helps you understand multiplying fractions a little bit better.